Microsoft ticker symbol MSFT is currently trading at $407 a share. This is pretty much the all time high for the stock and it is up almost 70% over the last year. What we're going to be doing today is looking at the stock, looking at its financials using my automated stock valuation spreadsheet where we can see all of the latest financials for the company then looking at the discounted free cash flow model the comparables company model and finally the ben graham formula for intrinsic value to see if this stock is a buy or a sell if you're interested in this spreadsheet please check out my patreon links are in the description but let's have a look at this stock. So as I said, it's up almost 67% over the last year. And if we look at the slightly longer chart of five years, this stock was going up quite dramatically up until 2022, had a drop off that entire year. But since the uh, start of 2023, this stock is up almost 80%. If we are to compare it to the market at that time, well, there will be no surprises here what is beating it. Over the last five years, the market has done very well, up almost 80%, but Microsoft is almost up 300%. Even if we take that to a more recent date, over the last year, the market is up 20%, whereas Microsoft is up almost 70 And finally, year to date, actually pretty, well, not really close again. Uh, Microsoft is up 10%, whereas the market is up 33 So this stock has consistently beaten the market over the last five years, should you buy it. Let's go have a look at my stock valuation spreadsheet. But before then, can you please uh, give a like on the video if you're enjoying it and subscribe if you're not already, because I will be trying to release more videos for 2024. So this is my automated stock valuation spreadsheet. All we need to do here is put in the ticker and then the sheet will handle all the rest. It will load up all the details about the company, the financials, but we'll go through that as we continue throughout the video. As I said, price is around about $407 a share, market cap of 3 billion, a uh, trillion, sorry, 3 trillion, making it the second largest in company in the world behind only Apple. PE is around about uh, 39. This is the price to earnings ratio. Uh, earnings per share is $10.33. Beta 0.88, which means it is moving slightly, uh, fluctuates less, most, less than the market. Uh, shares 7.4 billion we'll be talking about uh, shares outstanding in a later bit and the target price from analysts is 390 dollars a share so currently trading slightly higher than that they have earnings on the 30th of january 2024 so i'll probably be doing a video post that to look at the more up-to-date financials this stock is a dividend paying stock 0.23%, which means you get around about 94 cents a share. Now, is it a safe dividend? Well, the answer is actually yes. They pay around about 7 billion in dividend, which in terms of their payout ratio is 9%, or in terms of their free cash flow, uh, 11%. Ex dividend date is the 10th of February 2024. So buy your shares before then if you want to get paid the dividend. Now, these are the uh, figures for the last one, two, three, four, five years, and then the trailing 12 months. Um, we look at revenue, net income, shares outstanding, and free cash flow. But what I've added is a more comprehensive chart where we can see this. So why do we care about revenue? Well, this is the money generated from the normal business operations. It's the sales, number of units sold. It is the gross income, and then we take everything from that. So as we can see here, this goes back to uh, 20, uh, 2010 and revenue has steadily increased. Uh, it was 62, slowly increasing and is up to all time highs of 209 billion. So this has been a steady increase with the increase of cloud services and things like that since about 2018. It was pretty stagnant, not stagnant, but it was very slow and they have doubled since 2018. Next, we want to have a look at the net income. What is net income? Well, this is earnings, profit. This is sales minus costs of everything, um, operation expenses, depreciation taxes, everything like that. And once again, we want this to be increasing. Now we can see a very similar story from 2010 to 2018, pretty much all over the place. And then it has gone on a sort of meteoric rise from uh, 40, 44, 61, 72, and down slightly to 72.36, but still a very, very profitable company. 
Next, we want to have a look at the shares outstanding. What is this? Well, what do we want? We want this to be decreasing or at least flat. Why? Because if you have one share in a company and there's 10 shares outstanding, you own 10% of the company. Whereas if they create more shares, say 10, there'll be 20%, you'd own now 5% of the company. What you want is this uh, decreasing because if the stock is undervalued, they keep on buying it and then it decreases the amount. So you can see here, basically since 20, uh, 2010, they have been steadily buying back shares, rewarding the investors. And finally, let's have a look at free cash flow. What is free cash flow? Cash from operating activities minus CapEx. And the more free cash flow the company has, the more they can pay dividends, allocate dividends, pay down debt and growth. And a similar story, up until 2018, this company was, Microsoft was not flat, but as you can see, pretty all over the place, 18, 20, 12 million, uh, billion, and then has shot up dramatically once again. Although it is down slightly to numbers prior to 2021 with 60 billion now let's have a look at my discounted free cash flow sheet um what we want to do here is oh my mistake let me just update this this is my old sheet so i'm just uh, refixing it because there has been some work done on the apis now, what do we do for discounted free cash flow? Well, this looks at the uh, expected future cash flows and determines some today's value. And as we can see here, based on the numbers, uh, we can see that we've estimated future earnings at around about, sorry, future revenues at uh, 233 billion, 252,272. We've estimated the income, and actually that gives a stock price which does look a little bit low at $130 a share. Now, if we look at the numbers at the top here, this is where we calculate the averages. In terms of, yeah, so you can see here, one of the things I've noticed is revenue is slowing where it's it's gone down quite a bit. Now, if we were to um, have a look and see what analysts are expecting for revenues and then compare them to what we have, uh, we will go to Yahoo Finance here and we will look at what analysts are expecting. So on the high side, they're actually expecting in 2025 or 2024, 230, 273. So what we'll do actually is we'll be a little bit more bullish on these numbers. We'll increase this at around about, uh, we'll go 12% initially. That puts the stock price still to 150. So the next thing we look at is the net income margins. Microsoft has good net income margins, and I think this is a fair estimate again. And then net income to free cash flow rate. Uh, let's up this one to the more recent number of 82%. Still, we have a calculated stock price of around about, even on the high side, $200 a share. Now, if we were to look at Microsoft, um, if we just look at the stock itself, this has very similar numbers to what it had back in 2020, 2022. So 2023, the stock was a no-brainer buy because it had very similar numbers, in fact, slightly stronger. Um, but you can see here, it might be overvalued based on discounted free cash flow. Next, what we do is have a look at the... Um, a comparable companies model. What is this? Is it looks at similar companies using metrics uh, across those companies to then compare. So what we have here is we have Microsoft and some similar companies, Apple, Google, and I've also put IBM in there. Very different, I know, but I just want to kind of get a different uh, look on this. So what we'll have here is the equity value, the enterprise value, the revenue, the EBITDA, which is um, the uh, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, amortization. Then we have the net income, and then we have the metrics here. The ones that we are looking at is EV to revenue. Uh, this compares the company's revenue to its enterprise value. Once again, the lower is the better. Lower normally means undervalued. Then we're looking at EV to EBITDA. This is, uh, once again, lower is better number here. And then finally, P ratio, we do want a lower P as well. Now, if we have a look at the numbers, you can see Microsoft is actually the highest across all of these. EV to EBITDA, 20 uh, compared to Apple 23, Google 20, uh, IBM 15, P ratio is the highest as well. So no, so interesting enough, or not really interesting, no surprising that we can see that the stock is a little bit overvalued compared to its uh, competitors. And finally, we are going to be looking at the Ben Graham formula for value investing. He is the father of value investing and what this does is it looks at earnings per share p versus a non-growth company looking at the expected growth and the triple a bond yields and kind of giving that a value into today's uh, number so if we first look at the growth rate we will go to yahoo finance and as you can see analysts over the next five years are expecting around about 14 percent in growth 
then we will look at the AAA bond yield, which is obviously very high at the minute, and that is a uh, 4.74. Um, so we'll include that in here. And what this will do is it will actually give us a pretty low price again, $120 a share. So that is actually quite low. So basically, all of the models are saying it is a little bit overvalued at the minute, uh, apart from perhaps maybe the comparable companies where it's a lot more of a fair estimate. Right, guys, thanks for watching. Please give a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're not already. And uh, look out for more videos. Hopefully, these will get better as I'm a little bit out of practice. But um, the data is still good. Right, guys, catch you later.